Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zia Scaravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here on the show floor at Black Hat 2024. I'm at the Menlo Security Booth. I'm with Andrew Harding, your VP of Security Strategy. That's right. Uh, tell me about a little bit about what you do with Menlo. I help Menlo figure out how to best take to market the things that our team builds. So the product team has lots of great ideas, ideas for managing the browser, for protecting users, and securing access. And I work with the team to figure out how to take it to market, and also make sure the market hears about the latest from threat from the threat research team so that we folks know there are new tactics out there they need to protect themselves from. Okay, and how have you found the show so far? It's, uh, it's a busy show. Yeah. Feeling, feeling good about it. We've had traffic at our booth has been great and yeah. uh, we've been really building up that, that Menlo community at this yeah. show. Yeah, you got a pretty big booth here. Uh, just some highlights of what you're showing here. So what we're focusing on here is the zero trust access solution that's part of the secure enterprise browser solution from Menlo Security. Zero trust access with Menlo is rooted in a secure by design and a browser-based approach to zero trust access. Yeah. So you don't need to worry about network segmentation. In many cases, you don't have a network infrastructure to go and segment anymore. So with Menlo, you focus on the browser, you focus on the applications, you focus on the user and other elements of identity and other elements of policy, and it deploys easily. No more worrying about micro segmentation or changing routing or deploying a client in order to get a zero trust access solution. Now, zero trust has been a huge topic over the last few years, right? Uh, everything seems like every vendor here, uh, other than AI, maybe has got some zero trust in their tagline, right? I bet you there's AI driven zero trust somewhere. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and so how does, uh, with, with all the other zero trust solutions out there, a lot of the SSE ones, they, so are you complementary to that? Do you replace it? How do you work with those solutions? It's a great question. The, you know, the zero trust network architecture, I mean, almost rooted all the way back to the days of NAC, way, way back, right? It's evolved and it started when folks were wanting to control access to networks because access to networks was really almost an analogy for access to resources. Today, people don't control resources. They don't control networks, they need to control resources. Yes. So Menlo focuses on the user's identity, the browser, elements of policy like location and geography, also elements of policy associated with the endpoint, and we do that without requiring you to control the network over which the traffic's going. So we really take that whole assumption around, hey, I gotta own the network to do zero trust. We just take that, we remove it, and we focus on providing access to the resources. Of course, something has to be between yeah. the user and the resource to provide any policy. We do that with the Menlo Cloud by connecting the Menlo Cloud to those applications. Oh, I gotcha. Okay, and so it's a much simpler way to do it then versus having to always be changing all the the, the policies and the you know the access controls and things like yeah, that. You know, it's, yeah, yeah. The hard part of zero trust always is figuring out that policy. And when you can think about the policy by identity and access, and just take the network complexity out of it, a lot of that complication goes away. We've also encapsulated a lot of that the, the complicated stuff inside of Menlo Cloud. Yeah. And in contrast to the, the kind of legacy approach, or even, you know, SSC is getting to be five years old, and it's really, um, you know, of course it's had some success, but folks are struggling with the complexities and the costs. Our approach encapsulates that complexity inside of the Menlo Cloud and makes it really simple. Customers deploy an application connector in their environment, and we actually announced enhancements to support uh, Microsoft Azure, the Hyper-V hypervisor, Google Cloud. So you can really have a multi-cloud environment where you deploy application connectors, and then those connectors go to the Menlo Cloud, and then from there, it's a secure cloud browser, the policy, and the Menlo Cloud taking care of that for you. Yeah, and I know we've covered this in other videos, but I don't want to reiterate why from the browser? Because uh, it's interesting, browser security has been around a long time. In fact, Menlo, one of the pioneers, and it, it seems that the the concept of driving security from the browser still isn't all that well understood, right? And uh, I'm, I'm with yeah. you. You know, we need to protect the user. And where does the user work? What's the workspace? In the which browser they do most of their work. You yeah. nailed it. We know from research, our own research, and research on the outside that. 50% of users can do their entire job inside of the browser. And 80% of users can do most of their job, about 80% of their job from inside the browser. So that's the place where we can provide controls. It's also the place where the attacks have turned. You know, we, we worry a lot about uh, Citrix bleed or log for shell or, or, or other kind of, you know, edge issues if you've got a vulnerability in a server. We've also done a pretty good job covering those up and fixing them yes. as, as an industry. 
And so because the attack surface has shifted, the browser is the place that folks are going after. It's also the place where people are working. So we got to get some controls there. Because if we don't, we're going to have more problems. And I think we need to do that without adding more endpoint complexity. If we had more endpoint complexity, we risk you know, another outage like we experienced a couple right, weeks ago. Yeah. And, and we don't want that to be happening over and over. So we want less endpoint complexity. We know we no longer control the networks over which the traffic goes because of the adoption of cloud, the adoption of SaaS. Yeah. So the browser is a place that we can enforce policy. And we can do that if we shift browsing to the cloud and have a local browser working in concert with a remote browser in the cloud. And one of the, and it lets you do some really interesting things. Like one of the things you're demoing at the booth is something called Heat Shield. And uh, so talk about how that works and how you're sort of using the unique attributes of working in a browser to find things that really there's no other way to find. The Heat Shield's super cool. Um, it is where we're using machine vision to look at a web page on behalf of the user. So the user has a helper. We've all been through that security training for phishing detection and all that. And you know, um, that's fine, it's required, we gotta do that. But imagine having a helper looking at the page for you going, hey, that's a phishing page. Yeah. So we use machine vision Not in the Not just cloud. a helper, but a, a, you know, a very high-end security helper. A machine intelligence, yeah, yeah. A, machine, uh, a machine intelligence helper that uses computer vision to identify the mismatch between a URL, a certificate, a fraudulent logo, you know, why am I on a domain that's not Amazon with a username and password for Amazon, yeah. for example? I've simplified that, but the machine vision system does that on your behalf. So there's someone looking at the page for you. And we do that, we are able to do that because we have the local browser and the hardened digital twin, the secure cloud browser, working together. We do that in a way that's seamless for end users. It's very different than having um, you know, some big complicated control on the endpoint or trying to do everything in the network. Yeah. On the endpoint, it just makes it more complicated and more expensive to run if you have to go and double your browsers, you know, have a replacement browser on the endpoint. And if you try to do it on the network, threats get through. And we've shown today with the, the research that we, we, we published, threats get through traditional control. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. So you found, uh, uh, before I ask you about that though, I did want to bring in an anecdote. Actually, one of the, um, Scott Gutterman from the PGA Tour, we're talking about AI, and he said, it lets the untrained eye see what the, what the trained eye does. And I think this is a great example with the browser. We can all, we've all had training in security, but phishing's gotten really good. <coughs> and sometimes you miss things, and sometimes it looks like my bank page, and but it's not, right? And so you can see that much. You, you know, you're really bringing that trained eye to every user and every session. It's, it's, it's cool. literally a trained yeah. eye. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> An artificial eye, but a trained yeah. eye. Yeah, now I know you, uh, the data you collect also fuels your threat research, and uh, you discovered something new, right? And yeah, so um, talk about that. So uh, Heat Shield discovered something new, the threat team analyzed it, and um, it's, it's an interesting new tactic. Um, you know, on, on the endpoint, there's been a, um, a history of folks trying to nest um, nest shells and um, get you know evade EDR by nesting shells, and that same tactic has been brought to bear on browser attacks by chaining open redirects. So a URL that will take a URL as a parameter and redirect you to that URL. Um, sometimes that's a flaw in a website. Sometimes it's a URL shortener. And what we've seen, and this is what we call a living off trusted sites attack. What we've seen is that inside of Google Draw, where you can add a URL. A phishing attack has now used the re a, re a URL there and then two redirect services, one that's uh, associated with the meta property, that double redirect gets through a lot of traditional controls and then what's presented to the user is a fraudulent Amazon login page that's very convincing to an end user. Yeah, yeah and in fact those are getting uh, much better today too because it even from a URL perspective, it's getting very difficult to tell. It's, yeah, yeah, the so. URLs, it's sometimes difficult because they're clever about yeah, how yeah. they craft the URL. And also there are tools to help them make a better, more sort of more, more highly produced web page. Uh, this web page, it's, it's in the report. It's indistinguishable if you just look at the picture from, from the Amazon sign in. Yeah. Uh, all right, anything else you want to talk about? Or, or no, I think, I think that's about it. We have yeah. new capabilities for Zero Trust Access that expand its applicability in a Mac OS environment, an Apple environment, including an extension for Safari that works for mobile as well. And we have new capabilities for Zero Trust that expands it to um, other clouds, so from Amazon to Google and from Amazon to, to Microsoft. So we've got a multi-cloud approach on the, the cloud side and we're addressing the need, you know, the need for Apple, which is emerging. So I think in, yeah. in, the, in the enterprise well, right now, now. <laughs> right. Yeah. it's Chrome, it's Edge, and yeah. it's also Apple. Yeah, yeah, all right. So 
uh, ZTN updates, some interesting threat research, and AI in your browser. Is that sum it up? You nailed it. All right, so I'm back for Andrew Harding. I'm ZS Care Valor from ZK Research saying uh, thanks for watching. Uh, make sure you hit the subscribe button. I'll see you next time in the next episode of ZCast. Thanks, thanks Andrew. Seven.